Hi guys, um, today I'm back with another devlog um, for Terra, and today what I'm going to be talking about is the new object placement feature that I've added. I'm really excited to show this off because I think this is what will set apart Terra from, um, or at least get Terra uh, to a place where it can be compared to many other procedural terrain generators um, and what can make your worlds actually come to life. So. Um, Basically, what this means is you can create um, a set of rules, um, and what these rules dictate is how objects will be placed along your terrain. Um, and there's a bunch of different options that I'm going to show off now. So if you look over at the right, um, we still have this same editor um, that we've had before, but now what we have is we have this new tab, which is for procedural object placement. So if I go ahead and click Add Object, um, you'll see that this looks very similar to the material editor. Um, what we have for options is a prefab that you can specify, and we should always start with that first. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select, uh, let's say a bush. Mm, this one looks good. Okay. And now we have a bunch of options that I'm going to go through really quickly. Um, first off, we have this place probability. Um, and what this is, is it's on a scale from 0 to 100. So whenever an object is being evaluated to check if it should be placed on your terrain, you can say that, all right, well, there's a 100% chance that this object will be placed, or there is a 50% chance that this object will be placed, or anything in between. What the object spread is it basically says how spread out should these objects be from each other. Um, and why don't we go ahead and update the preview? So by default, you'll see that there's a ton of these bushes placed all around our terrain, and we haven't set any rules for them yet. So what we get here is we get this really cool preview of all of these guys. Um, so why don't we try changing the object spread to something around 30. All right, and now you'll see that these are evenly distributed um, or approximately evenly distributed um, from 30 points from each other. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this back to 10, and I'm going to show you some of the other cool features. Um, so let's update the preview. One thing we have is we have this max objects option. Um, and what max objects does is it says, uh, what's the maximum amount of objects that can be placed on this terrain tile? This does not work for the entire scene. So um, that's actually kind of helpful because you can have a bunch of terrain tiles and you're saying, well, you know, if something is weird in our random number generator and we get like a thousand objects on this one, that's okay, we'll limit it to 500 so our computer doesn't freak out. What you can also do is you can constrain the height. So I'm going to check this. Um, and the way this works is first you specify a minimum height that these objects will show up at, and then you specify a maximum height that these objects will show up at. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set my minimum height to negative um, 60. I'm going to set my maximum height to 100. And if we click update again, you'll see that all these objects look relatively the same. However, down here, this is below negative 60, so it won't show up. What I also want to show off is this probability curve. And this is really interesting in the way it works. If we click this little question mark here, it gives a quick description of it because it's a little complicated. Um, but it says that the x-axis of this curve, which you know what, I'll bring that up right here. The x-axis of this curve represents the height of the terrain. So the complete um, bottom left here represents negative 60, while the right here represents the max height of 100. And the y-axis represents the probability that an object will show up at that location. So this is really cool because what we can do is something like this, where we select this curve and we say there's a very low probability that objects will show up at this location, but there's a almost 100% probability that objects will show up at this location. So if you're, say, at negative 40, the chance of an object showing up is around like 15%, while if you're at max height of 100, you'll have a 100% probability that objects will show up. So if we update the preview, you'll notice that the closer you get towards the bottom, the sparser the objects are. So you'll see here, there's not as many objects close together as there are up here. And you can make this even more extreme if you'd like. So let's do something like this. 
bring this all the way down here. And we'll even out this curve a little bit. All right. Let's bring these farther in. All right. If we update the preview, you'll see that there are virtually no objects really far down um, because our probability curve dictates, oh, okay, well, if we're quite low on the curve, um, on the height, then we won't display these. But if we're quite high in the height, then we'll start creating more objects. Um, and what this does is it, it allows for a more random distribution of your objects. Um, and maybe you want something like, you know, um, pine trees will only show up at really high elevations um, and maybe snowy locations. Um, so this can be really helpful in that. We also have the constraint angle. So what we can say is we only want objects to show up from an angle of zero degrees to 30 degrees. So if I set my max height, my max angle to 30, and I update the preview, you'll notice that in this area where it starts getting really um, steep, we're at around 30 degrees, objects won't show up. And just as a better proof of concept, you can change this to 25. And you notice that objects really don't start to show up on this hilly area. Um, let's say if you want rocks to not show up on hills because they'd roll down, well, you have that option. Then we have translate, rotate, and scale. Um, translate allows you to, actually all of these allow you to optionally transform the object that's being placed randomly or at a certain amount that you specify. So let's say that I want a translation of 15. So I want every object to be translated in the Y direction up 15. So if I do that and I press update preview, all of these objects start to float above their terrain because each one is being translated 15 upwards in the Y direction. Let's put that back to zero because we don't really want floating uh, bushes. You can also have a random translation. So you can say that I want to randomly translate these objects from, you know, negative one uh, to a maximum of uh, one. Um, and that works for any of these. So let's actually check out scale because it's a little bit different. Right now, um, scale defaults to one, which is actually the default scale for uh, a Unity game object that's placed. But what we could do is we can say that we want to randomly scale. So the thing about scale is that it scales in X, Y, and Z directions. But oftentimes you'll want to scale all X, Y, and Z directions at the same, by the same factor. So we have this scale uniformly toggle. And if we check that, we can scale optionally from um, any minimum and any maximum. So if we do the default options, which is 1 to 1.5, and update the preview, you'll see that we get this cool distribution of uh, skinnier, smaller bushes, and bigger ones. So if we click on this one, you'll see, you'll see that the scale is 1.18. And then this one is about 1. This one's 1.2. This one's 1.24, um, and that's how that works. All right, so this is just a quick rundown of the new object placement feature. Um, of course, you can add an arbitrary amount of objects that you want to place. Um, but one thing I want to show really quickly before I go is that this is a very, very fast feature. So if we go ahead and run our game and give it a second, You'll see that these objects populated very quickly, but if we move around the tracked position, there is no slowdown from the generation of tiles to moving these objects. Now the reason for this is because the objects are contained in an object pool. So whenever a tile moves, instead of instantiating and creating all these objects again, they're just deactivated and activated and moved around. And that's how that works. That's the object placement feature. Um, this feature will be live on the Unity App Store uh, Asset Store in a few days. Um, and from there, you can go ahead and download the update if you purchased it already. And if you haven't, go ahead and give it a buy if you're interested. Um, and always feel free, as specified in the documentation, to send me an email if you have any questions. All right. Thank you.